Welcome to our lecture online. So here we have three new examples. What we're going to do in these cases are we're going to be transforming them into this particular format so we can say, see the shift to the left or right and the shift up or down. But in this case we're also going to use the advantage that since the equation is written in this format we already have the y-intercept. The constant at the very end is always going to be the y-intercept because when you let x equal 0, y will equal negative 8. When x equals 0, y equals negative 7. When x, when x equals 0, y equals 10. So let's go ahead and already find the y-intercepts. So here it'll be at negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There, so we know the parabola will go to that point. Over here it's negative 7. So we know that the parabola will go to that point, and here it's plus 10. We know that the parabola will go to that point. So you already right away know where the parabola will cross the y-axis. So now let's do the conversion. Let me rewrite the equation here. We have y equals x squared plus 6x plus 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to take half of this and square it. So half of 6 is 3, squared is 9. So this becomes y equals x squared plus 6x plus 9. Of course, since we add a 9, we'll have to subtract a 9 as well. So when we have a plus 9, minus 9, that cancels out, we get the original equation back. But now what we can do is we can group the first three terms together, and we can write this as y equals x plus 3 quantity squared plus 10 minus 9 is plus 1. And so this gives us the shift to the left of 3 and up 1. So left 3, 1, 2, 3, up 1. So that means, that means the vertex is over here. We know that it crosses through that point. And we also know that the parabola opens upward because we have a positive x squared. That means our parabola will look like this. And the mirror image over here. So, knowing also the y-intercept helps you draw a slightly more accurate graph. Our next equation, again, we'll rewrite it here. y equals x squared plus 4x minus 7. Again, I'm going to take half of this and square it. So we have y equals x squared plus 4x. Half of 4 is 2 squared. I get plus 4 and, of course, minus 4. Then if I combine all that, we get y equals, I can write this as the binomial squared, x plus 2 squared, and minus 7 minus 4 is minus 11. So that means that, oh, I'm running out of room here. Well, I'll fake it. All right. So the um, shift to the left is 2, 1, 2, minus 2, and the shift down is 11. So that's 8, 9, 10, 11, minus 11. That means my vertex is negative 2, negative 11, right over there. And notice that the problem will go from here. It opens upward. It goes to this point right there. So it'll look like this. And we can also draw an axis of symmetry. So we know that the problem will look exactly the same. will be a mirror image on both sides of the axis of symmetry, which goes right through, of course, the vertex. And it's aligned parallel to the y-axis. So notice that this here is negative 2, there's the, the y-axis, this is distance of 2, so I go to the left 2, 1, 2, I know that the problem will pass to this point as well. And again, as you indicated, that makes the graph a little bit more accurate as well. Okay, let's try it on this one here. We have y equals negative 3x squared minus 6x minus 8. The first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and pull the negative 3 out. So this is y equals negative 3 times x squared plus 2x, leave some room, minus 8. So by factoring out a negative 3, it makes everything a lot easier to work with. I take half of this and square it. Half of 2 is 1 squared, I get plus 1. But negative 3 times plus 1 is negative 3. That's like adding a negative 3. That means I have to add a positive 3 as well to compensate for that. So now we have y equals negative 3 times x plus 1 squared. And that would be minus 8 plus 3 it would be minus 5. Okay, that means it shifted 
to the left by 1 and down by 5. So to the left by 1, down by 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is negative 5, this is negative 1. So this is where we're going to have a vertex. Now notice the negative sign means that it opens downward. So from the vertex we go right to this point right here. And if we then draw an axis of symmetry, notice that over here we have a distance of 1 from the axis of symmetry to where it crossed the y-axis. If I go 1 to the left, right there, at minus 2, there's minus 2, then I know the parabola goes to that point as well. well that's it. There we go. A little bit better. Okay, and that is how we graph it. Again, what we did was we fact out a negative 3 to have a positive x squared. If I fact out a negative 3, from here I get a plus 2x. I take half of 2, which is 1 squared, I get plus 1. But the negative 3 times plus 1 is like a negative 3, so I have to add a positive 3. Then I can write this as a square of binomial. It shifted to the left by 1, down by 5, which is where we find our vertex. We also found the y-intercept at negative 8. If we draw the axis of symmetry from negative 1 to 0, that's 1. We can go to the left 1. That means we can draw another point right there. And we know that the parabola will go to that point because of the perfect symmetry about the axis of symmetry. And that is how it's done. Well, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Well, you just say it. You don't write it out. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes it's good to see it. I know it's easy for you. Oh, okay. I get you. I get you. I see what you're saying. You're just blabbing it on. This is how it's done. Well, I'm glad. I'm happy that you know how it's done. Okay. So what, what you're saying is this. So you have the quantity 3... Oh, no, not 3, just an x squared. So you have the quantity x squared plus 2x, and then a blank, and then so what goes in here, right? The question is, how do you get that? Yes. And so what we do is, what goes in here, you take this number right here, 2 divided by 2, and you square it. So in this case, that would be 1 squared, which is 1, and that goes in here. So that's what you wanted to see. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. So I'll do it over there, so you can see how it's done there. You like a different color. All right. So we have x squared plus 4 in a blank. So we take the number 4. We divide it by 2. And we square it. So that 4 divided by 2 is 2 squared. It gives me 4. That means we're going to add a 4 there. So that's where that came from. And we do the same over here. So we end up with... If I take this quantity right here, we have x squared plus 6x, and then a blank is spaced for the third term. So we take the number 6, we're going to divide it by 2, and we're going to square that, which is 3 squared, which is 9. And that's the number that goes in here, so plus 9, and that's where that came from. So, yep, that helps. <laughs>